Thank you very much uh, for introduction. Uh, I thank uh, the economist uh, for the uh, opportunity to update uh, our situation on the development of uh, ISMED pipeline, and I thank especially the two ministers who have <laughs> introduced uh, this uh, subject. So last time uh, I came here was two years ago, and I will uh, present uh, where we are now. So first of all, what are we talking about? We are talking of depotalnecking the gas reserves which are in the East Med regions. So the uh, maths are quite uh, simple because there is something like uh, 1300 BCM of gas already discovered in the region. And if you divide by uh, 25, you see that there is a potential of 50 BCM per year to, to, to use, because after 2050, the future of gas is not at all uh, secured. So uh, 50 BCM per year, if you subtract uh, the Israeli conception and uh, neighboring countries, which are Jordan and uh, Egypt, we arrive uh, to 25. So there is 25 BCMs which so far have found uh, no route. And uh, the most obvious route is to go to the existing Egyptian uh, uh, facilities, Damietta and Ditku. But uh, taking into account their template capacity and their uh, uh, actual use, uh, we are talking about 10 BCM. So 15 BCM, they are just there waiting for solutions. So what are the solutions? Of course, uh, ISMED pipeline, I will come back on this. And uh, new LNG solutions, which could have been uh, onshore in uh, Cyprus, or uh, floating LNG uh, at uh, offshore of uh, Israel. So uh, this is the overall picture. If there is not a new route which is uh, found, this uh, gas with, will remain under the soil and uh, will not be used by the future generations or it is not likely that it will be done. So now where, where are we with the project? Uh, two years ago I said uh, the, economic, the uh, technical feasibility has been uh, completely confirmed uh, and now we are, uh, we are working on the economical aspects uh, on the <coughs> development of the project. So the project is of two sections. Uh, the main section is uh, from Israel to the uh, uh, shore, uh, west shore of uh, Greece. And the second section, which, which is the old Poseidon, which is already fully developed. Contracts have been signed for construction, just waiting that uh, Ismed uh, pipeline is ready to, to fly. So <clears throat> during the last two years, we have been awarding all the uh, development uh, contracts for uh, being in a position to take the final investment decisions. We are talking of 70 million euros, half of which are being financed by the European commissions. And uh, before the starting of the pandemic, we awarded all of these contracts which are in force now and on which uh, we are uh, actively working. But uh, there is more. There is more in so far as uh, we have uh, checked the uh, economical viability of uh, the project, one, uh, it's one uh, item. And the second item is that we check this uh, uh, viability in competition with an LNG solutions. And our findings are quite uh, interesting. So let's have a look uh, to the market. Uh, what are telling us the market about that? Because uh, the project is a 6 billion euros uh, project, which can be financed only if there are long-term contracts between the producer in Israel and the Cyprus and the uh, consumer either in Italy or in Greece and in the Balkans. So let's have a look. Uh, rapidly to each of the market. So this is a price we have seen on the spot market in blue 
on the Italian market, which is very volatile, but it's not uh, so interesting. What is interesting is that if you buy forwards, you have a price recently above uh, $7 per uh, million BTU, which is a unit uh, that we used. Let's say that $7 per million BTUs is a good uh, threshold of uh, comfortable uh, viability of the project. I will explain why uh, later. So we are, uh, we are in good position uh, on this. Now we are talking of long-term contracts, 25 years, and we have to see if LNG in Asia especially would provide uh, more benefit, more premium. And uh, you have here the curve of uh, the uh, prices of the long-term contracts on the ASEAN market, which uh, are, are finished by end of uh, 2019 for the Mozambique project in the range of 11% brand, because all, uh, all prices are indexed to the brand. So this is an interesting number, 11%. If you go to Asia, you have 11% as a revenue. Now, if you go to Italy, forward market, we have also something in the range of 11% uh, brand, which means that uh, more or less the mar markets have converged between Europe and Asia, and with the uh, big uh, spike of the prices that we are seeing uh, for now two, three months, this correlation is maintained. So there is no major difference between <coughs> Asia and Europe. There is still a small uh, premium to the Asian market, if you look still to the <coughs> spot market, but this premium is no longer the premium that was seen uh, at the time of Fukushima. Uh, it's in the range of 0.75 dollar per million BTU, which even does not cover uh, the um, transportation uh, difference between Europe and uh, Asia. So the conclusion on this is that uh, there is no specific uh, uh, advantage to uh, the LNG uh, for the East Mediterranean, East Mediterranean gas. Of course, if you go somewhere else, the calculation would be uh, different. And uh, the proof of, we, of this, I will not comment all the numbers, is to look at the uh, logistic cost uh, to bring uh, this uh, gas to the, to the market. So in the central column, the cost of uh, EastMed to bring to uh, Italy, for instance, is uh, $2.9 dollar per million BTU for the, uh, uh, for the pipeline, and 0.3 to enter in Italy. We are at 3.2. If you look at LNG solution either in uh, Europe or in uh, Asia, you see a little advan uh, small advantage to uh, Egyptian facilities at Damietta, taking into account uh, the numbers we have here. But there is a list of uh, additional costs that we don't have with the pipeline. So uh, basically, if we ex exclude uh, the Egyptian existing facilities, ISMED in all cases is uh, more convenient than an LNG solutions. So then, what are the revenues? We have seen before that uh, we can calculate in terms of uh, brand price. So uh, take 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars per million BTU, you will get the price in the final uh, market, either in Europe or in uh, Asia. And then we have what we call the net back uh, calculations, which which is what remains to the producer and to the, uh, uh, and to the states uh, which are producing the gas. And you can see that uh, ISMED is more competitive than every LNG solution except uh, Damietta, it is in the same range. And the final number uh, we get here is with uh, ISMED, we have a net back price in Israel or Cyprus in the range of three to five dollars <coughs> per million BTU. So the project can fly, economically speaking. And uh, this is uh, my conclusion that I will uh, summarize on this uh, slide. 
I repeat, we don't consider ourselves in competition with Egyptian existing facilities. Uh, the uh, uh, competition with LNG is more favorable in uh, all uh, cases, and uh, it gives uh, a uh, net back which is in the range of three to five dollars per million uh, BTU, uh, which could be in the range of uh, the uh, viability, uh, which is more, five is more than the viability of the project. Three is a little bit uh, just, but it can uh, work anyhow. And uh, of course, this means that uh, we have to find a, a balanced contract between the producers and the potential uh, buyers. So this is the work we have uh, still to do with uh, studies of development of the projects. Okay, thank you for attention.